we're trying to get you in there painting, but you got to do the prep and you got to know what you're using in terms of your tools. So you've gone through some of the prep with us. Now let's talk about the tools because you can't yes. just pick up any brush or any roller. You have to pick the right tool for the job. Yes, and whenever I get my friends um, emailing me, you know, at midnight because their paint <laughs> job isn't going well, it's usually because they haven't used the right roller. It's too right. thick. It's not thick enough. It's usually those things. It's not usually you and the paint. Yeah. It's usually the tools. So I brought a selection of different rollers, and this is what happens when you go to the store. You've got this nice six millimeter, and I like mm -hmm. using microfiber rollers. So these are really great um, Benjamin Moore rollers and microfiber. So they're relatively they're they're reason lint why free. they're lint free, so they're they don't leave free. anything behind. Yes, and I find them easier to wash as well if you're going to reuse them, which is always a great idea. Okay. So you've got this smooth one, six mil pile. So it's good for a super smooth. Like if you're painting a door with a high gloss finish, yeah, and mm -hmm. you're using a roller you want to use a six mil. When you get into regular eggshell or even matte, um, Benjamin Moore's or a matte, this is what I always recommend, is the 10 millimeter roller. Okay. So matte and eggshell, it's got a little bit of a pile, so you can put enough paint on, yep. but it's not going to leave that sort of orange peel effect that happens okay. when you use something like a 15 or a 20 mil roller. These are meant for textured surfaces, so if you're doing concrete block or stucco, and if you have really, really deep stucco, you might even get into these split foams. You can see oh, that. So Trace. that's how that works. Yeah. So I'm trying to show you so you see goes see that? into the crevices and applies the paint in a more uniform so manner. So for bricks maybe that sort bricks. of thing? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Bricks and heavily textured surfaces like, like heavy stucco. Okay, exterior. cool. Exterior. So that's where you want to pay attention to your roller. When it comes to brushes, you're mm -hmm. using your brush to usually do your trim for yep. the most part, to do all of your cutting in. So really there's lots of brushes out there. I have to say for 20 years I've been using a two and a half inch angle sash. And that's what you love. That's what I love. I, I have like five of the same size brush. Yes. <laughs> and I just love them. They clean really well and you can see how they're tapered at the edge so you get a nice clean straight line which is yep. what I'm going to show you when it comes time to cutting in. You want to have a really good brush. This is a polyester um, bristle so it's great for water-based paints. Okay. When you get into the pure bristle ones they're better for oil paints mm. um, but for the most part we're using water-based water. paint all the, all the way now. So okay. I've got this really nice brush but I thought I'd use my old one for my real work. We all know what we love. Yeah, <laughs> keep this pretty for when you actually need to break that open. Or keep that pretty. So I am using Aura Matte, so it's mm -hmm. matte finish. I'm using the color blue Echo. You can see that I've painted all of my trim first. I use a satin finish for that. I painted that and you can see that I was messy. So I always like to do my trim and my ceilings first. You can be a bit messy and then that way you also fill in the crevices with the thicker paint and it's easier to cut in. If I'm trying to cut in to paint this over a freshly painted wall, That's you have to be really careful and you have to tape. So of course if you're comfortable, you more tape. comfortable taping, you can tape. Yeah. But I find that if you have a fairly steady hand, just don't drink too much coffee before yeah. you're doing this project. <laughs> and if you were taping, Cher, so you would be taping out all this trim so that you're not getting any of that blue exactly. gray on here. So you okay. would do that. But you can see um, in between, I, I ran around really quickly and painted, I cut in along the baseboard and you're around steady. the window. Pretty steady, but now that I'm doing it live, I might not. But the key <laughs> is my angle sash brush. I don't have too much paint on there. And you want to work fairly fast so that you kind of get a nice straight line like okay. this. Nice. There. There. See, I only had two coffees, so it's not bad. And then you want to, you know, just try and brush it out because the further out you get, it'll just make it easier when you're actually when you're painting. using your roller. So we've done that. This is actually another really great tool that I thought I'd bring in as well. That if you don't want to use tape, yeah. you can just hold that. Oh, that's I'm, I'm, smart. I'm not a good lefty, but if it works out well for you, depending on which side, yes. you can put that along and just bring it along and just wipe any excess okay, off. Okay, good. Okay. I hope you're watching this, Brian, because we're there, there's a is test later on. I like that. We have to paint the walls of the studio. So now <laughs> I've done all of our wonderful prep. I'm using my 10 millimeter roller, my okay. 10 millimeter pile. So you want to make sure you get enough paint on it because again, you want the roller to do the hard work, not okay. you. I like to use these heavy duty poles, which you can actually attach your sander to. So if you were going to give the wall a nice ah. sanding before, which if I had lots of time, I probably would have. Right. Um, but again, so we've cut in along the ceiling if we had a ceiling and I am just going to paint up and down. And you can see 
I know that I put enough paint on because it's coming, it's working quite nicely. Right. And I'm just going to go up and down. Now, some painters love to do the W or the M and fill it in. So you do a, a shape of a W or an M and you fill it in. We find that with Aura Paint, um, it actually dries pretty quickly. Yeah. So you're better to just do up, up and, and down. down and keep going. Don't go back, like don't roll back into your paint. Right. Just trust. It doesn't look good when it's wet. But just trust yourself, and when it's all It'll done, all look it'll, good together. Oops. So that's cool. There you go. That's, uh, so that's the technique. You go up and down. Up and down. You and make you, sure you do all the prep, and then this is going to go so much exactly. smoother. And the other thing with the trim, because I've already cut in my color, we don't mind that it's dry. You can go all the way around the house, do all your cutting in, and then yeah. get to your rolling, and you're done. Is anyone else hypnotized? Keep going, Sharon. Don't we love watching paint dry? I really like it. It's great. Let's go to break. we got more coming up. Oh, that's good.